Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's Shelley and this is the Willow Tree Green. I'm going to talk today about um, mix and plans that I have um, for some of the fabric that's in my stash. I only have a very small stash. I don't really have a lot of space to, um, to keep fabric. So I um, have a couple of boxes basically here beside me in my living room and that's the extent of my storage capabilities. So I want to get rid of some of the fabric that I've been accumulating and I've been holding on to because I've been unsure of what to do with them, basically. Uh, it does relate to the dress that's behind me and also the dress that's underneath the dress that's behind me, uh, which is also related to last week's vlog where I did a twirl using a bedsheet of uh, the Megan Nielsen Matilda dress that I had hacked to remove the waistband. So I'm basically doing that again. This is um, not that. This is actually a version of the uh, McCall's M7969, which was a dress that went quite viral a few years ago. It was actually before I started sewing that this was everybody's favourite dress. And um, I, I didn't start sewing until February, March of 2023. <clears throat> so I missed the boat on that. But when I first started seriously thinking about sewing clothes, moving away from my other crafts into, into sewing garments. And I was searching on YouTube and uh, Instagram and all those various places. This dress kept on appearing and I absolutely loved the way it looked. So it was one of the first things that I ever made, not this version, another version. And I'll see if I can find a photo of that first version I made. I absolutely loved it. It was in a, um, it was in a cotton, I can't remember where that came from. I did post it on Instagram at the time because I was so happy with how that came out. And I have made, I think, I'm not sure if this is the second or if there are others, but I will have a think and see if I can find photos of the previous versions I've made. This version, I hacked slightly. So I reduced, um, as you can see from here, there are various sleeve options. I'm not a fan of the loose, I, my arms, I'm, I'm sure um, my arms are kind of big. And so I'm not that keen on the, the loose sleeve options. I love this. There are the, the uh, line drawings. I love this version with the big balloon sleeves that you can see on the, the main picture there on the front. Um, and that was the first version that I made. And I will most definitely, that's, that's the version I want to make again, actually. But I think that I might make the skirt longer, possibly with a tear. Um, not necessarily that long, but um, certainly longer than it currently is. I will put a video up of me wearing this version, um, just so you can see. It comes to just about my knee, I think, which is fine. I'm not. I don't have a problem with that. And I, in the winter, I will wear it with leggings anyway, because that's how I wear clothes. But um, what I did on this one, it's a. Uh, this is a viscose dobby that I got from Simple Life Fabrics, which seems to be the place I shop most of the time. It's got some uh, textured dots, which make the dobby part of it that stick out. It's very autumn vibes. I think I may have, I, I don't recall if I shared this fabric at all, but uh, it's an interesting fabric. Uh, in the video, hope, hopefully I'll come up close and you'll be able to see the texture. Anyway, as I was saying, I cut down the sleeve length so it actually sits to um, sort of just about here on my on my arm and I added some rows of uh, well actually just one row looking at it one row of shirring at the end there just to pull it in a little bit instead of uh, encasing elastic because sometimes I find that is a bit bulky and this is a very lightweight fabric I absolutely love this dress even though I made it a few months ago now when I was lighter I can still wear it. I do fit it out a bit better on the top half, but this is a, um, a very forgiving pattern for body fluctuations. And so even though I've put on a lot of weight since the last time I wore it, I can still fit into it and it is still comfortable to wear. So that's very pleasing to me because I do fluctuate uh, quite a bit. I am most definitely a yo-yoer. Um, so when I go back down again, I won't have dresses that I can't wear because they look too big. But uh, equally, when I am bigger, I can wear dresses that still look good, I think. So, so yeah, so I love this dress. Anyway, this particular fabric pattern, um, which reminds me of, um, I don't know, I keep seeing apples when I look at it. It is very autumn vibes, but this is a summer weight fabric. And I wore it on a holiday to Dubai to see my sister uh, last year or the year before. I think it was last year. 
absolutely love it and i recently shared a another viscose that i again i think i got from simple life fabrics this version which is very similar but it's a slightly cooler color this one is warmer in my opinion and this one is cooler but they're very very similar and i can't help myself i want to make this version again but the long sleeve slightly longer like tiered skirt version in this so i'll have two versions of the same dress basically but um in in slightly slightly different colorways so this one is not a dobby it's just a flat viscose it is a bit thicker so like i said this one's very much summer weight it's almost see-through in some places but not see-through enough to need to be lined um, whereas this one is more of a well i don't know standard weight viscose and so i do i i just i just love the idea of making it again maybe it's boring but they will be slightly different because obviously this one's short sleeved and it's a knee length skirt this one will be full length with the full length sleeve so i'm quite excited to try that an alternative which i'm toying with is the mccall's m7116 which is this now i've made a um this is i had this as one of the first patterns i ever had when i started sewing garments um, and i have made this version a couple of times i actually made a version for my sister which i sent over to her um in dubai and i have made this version i've never made these two they don't really interest me as much but i was thinking possibly this version for this viscose but i think i'm sold on the uh on the other pattern on the m7 7969 so it's either m7116 in view b or m7969 in view a i think that's probably what i'm going through view a but longer so so that's my first long-winded um, potential make. I'm, I'm feeling quite excited about that, so I can definitely see that one happening quite soon. The next one uh, fabric that I've had in my stash for a while is another Simple Life Fabrics. In fact, all three, I've got three things here are Simple Life Fabrics. Um, and it is this, um, it's like, it's like a I don't know it's a viscose wool but <laughs> i don't know if that's a thing but it's like a very lightweight wool um which i've shared previously um when i got it i thought it was going to be summer weight because i like the window pane check style but it's very it very much gives me winter vibes and as we're moving into the cooler months now um ideas that i had originally for this are coming back to mind so i got this pattern which is the rowan pinafore um, who's it by? I don't know who it's by, Cotton and Chalk. I don't know if they're a brand or if it's just, it was from Simply Sewing Magazine in the UK um, in one of the editions. And I absolutely love that pinafore. I love layering. I tend to wear clothes like that all the time. The, the dress or the tunic that I'm wearing, which is a uh, ready to wear, um, that I altered, I just pulled the shoulders up. up. Um, is when I would layer in the winter. I would wear a long sleeve t-shirt underneath, for instance. Anyway, this pattern I've had for a while in from one of those magazines, and this fabric, and that they're, they're just crying out to to be together. Do you know what I mean? So I have quite a bit of this. I think I got three meters at the times, which is more than enough to make this. In fact, I probably have some left. So I was also considering whether or not. I would want to try this again. I have made this before. I actually made the version with the pin tucks with a white viscose that I got in a, a D stash, I think. I think I got it in a D stash from Rach Stitched Up. I think that was what it was anyway, but that's a, there's a previous video about that if you're interested because I did struggle with the pin tucks with, with the instructions and I even paid for a, an extra um, tutorial on the Sew Over It website, which cost me five pounds which isn't a lot, but it was, um, I bought it to show me how to do the pin tucks piece and it, it didn't explain it enough. Anyway, getting off, off topic, there, there is a previous video if you want to go and find that about it. Anyway, um, I would quite like to make the version without the pin tucks using this potentially. I think that might be quite nice. This is a very drapey, whatever it is, it's some kind of mixed fabric, but I mean, you can see that's where I've washed it and I didn't overlock it before I washed it. It is 
it, I don't know, it's just like a wool. It's not heavy enough to be a coating. It's definitely dress material, but it's a lot thicker than I was anticipating. So I've got a feeling it's most likely going to be that, the Rowan Pinafore. Um, or I may look around to see if I can find something similar, but I do like the way that looks and it looks quite simple as well. Um, obviously the check matching might be a challenge, which I've just suddenly thought about. So that could be coming out. Otherwise, maybe, I don't know. So we'll see. So that's my next potential make. Then the next potential make with a previously existing fabric, again, another Simple Life Fabrics, is this um, Madras check which I think she's still got on her website, actually. If I can find it, I will link it. Or well, she's got definitely got other colorways of it. When I originally saw this, I was like really drawn to it. The greens and blues, and my kids believe I'm a bit colorblind because I see that as green and they say it's blue, but I don't know. So um, the greens and blues in this <clears throat> really drew me to this because they're kind of my favorite colors. Um, on receiving it, it's a lot bigger than I was anticipating. The, the pattern is a lot bigger. Being a petite woman of four foot ten, <clears throat> I wasn't sure. Excuse me, I've got something stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> I wasn't sure about having a dress in this because of the size of the pattern. But I don't know. I've seen um, Sequin Girly Sam has made skirts in this, and I think she's made dresses potentially, not necessarily this colorway, but definitely other colorways also from Sarah at Simple Life. And I like the skirt that she made. And I have made the, um, I don't have the pattern to hand because it's a PDF, but I've made the um, the pocket skirt that is a free, I think it's, it's, it might be mood patterns. It's one of the free patterns, which is a peppermint, oh, it's peppermint. Oh, it's come to me now. Peppermint pocket skirt. I'll put a picture up of what that looks like. And I have made a couple of versions of that in plain black and green that I, fabric that I got in a local ha hobby craft actually and they're very useful um skirts to have i quite i do like them this is i mean we're coming out of summer now we're getting towards the end of you know we're coming into september so i'm not sure but i kind of like the idea of making it up and just getting it out of my stash because otherwise it's just going to sit there with me staring at it not knowing what to do with it my kids have suggested pajamas i'm not really a pajama wearer although i did make some recently with my beyond the pink door fabric which isn't getting a lot of wear I have to say um I don't know otherwise I do have this another McCall's M8281 which is um summer dressy but you could also wear it in winter and I kind of like the idea of this with this so potentially that and then it may sit in my um sit in my wardrobe until next summer but I do like the idea of getting it out of my stash because I've got some new fabric coming in and I need the space, which takes me on to my next subject. So that may be coming up next. Otherwise, I may well make a skirt out of this, but we shall see. That's not high on my priority list. I just want to get it out of my stash. So finally, I, um, I haven't been buying much fabric recently. I've been trying to keep a handle on it again because I don't have a lot of space. I have used up some fabric recently. In fact, what is under there is my Beyond the Pink Door fabric that I got recently. <clears throat> but I've also made uh, a few, few things recently which I've shared in previous videos. And I was, as you do when you're watching TV, I was browsing websites. And I like to occasionally go and look at Guthrie Garney. I always find them a bit expensive, um, but they do have high-end fabrics. And I do like to look at their remnants section. So I was browsing through their remnants section and I found a fabric that I've been after for ages. So I haven't actually opened this yet because it just arrived, but I just wanted to show you how nicely it's packaged. Um, so it's, I haven't um, had a look at what the card says yet, yet but I just think that's just really nicely packaged. Um, so let's have a look. Excuse the wrestling. So the fabric that originally drew me to their website is, oh, what have we got here? Swedish tracing paper. So um, in the packaging, they're just, they've given me this sample of what Swedish tracing paper feels like, just so I can try it. And um, it does feel good, actually. I can see why I might want to try that. 
And they've given me 10% off, which is nice. Which I think I probably just gave to you as well. <laughs> so there's that. And I've got a little handmade card as well from um, uh, Carefully Picked by Rosie, Lovingly Packed by Gemma. And uh, you'll make something gorgeous with each of these. So that's nice. So the, anyway, the first fabric that I saw is this, which is a fabric godmother uh, viscose crepe. It's Joni, I think is the name of the pattern. And I have, I did have a remnant of this previously, which I made into one of my versions of the, pep, the, uh, the harvest top or the uh, boxy top. Uh, but I only had a very small remnant and I literally had to squeeze yeah, you know, I, I wanted to use up as much as I possibly could in that top. So absolutely everything that I had is in that boxy top, which I shared in a previous video. And I saw that they had, and this is obviously falling out uh, as in it's disappearing from lists because it's an old fabric of another print. You can see the texture there of the crepe, but I absolutely adore this pattern fabric. And I'm just trying to see how much I spent on this. So this was in their remnants and I got 1.2 meters and it cost me um, £18.24 for 1.2 meters. It is a bit of an expensive fabric, but I have been after this. I keep on looking on the Fabric Godmother website occasionally as well in their remnants to see if they've got anything. And they did have this, a, a, a what do they call it? It wasn't damaged, but I think it had a fault. That's it, fault, um, a faulty version. But I again, it was like £17 a meter and I couldn't. Just couldn't bring myself to buy it. This ended up being, I think, £15.20 a metre, if you work it out. Um, so yeah, 1.2 metres. So now I have to figure out what I can make with this and also what orientation I want it to be in. But I do love this and I'm so happy to finally have a piece. It'll be going straight in the wash. I think I'll probably overlock the ends looking at how that's fraying. So, uh, so happy to get that. Finally, 1.2 meters. What can I do? I have to think about that. And then, um, as I was looking, as you do, I looked in their sales section and I couldn't help myself when I saw this. So, this is another viscose. Um, they had it in their sale. I think it was in their sale section, I'm pretty sure. Uh, gorgeous, uh, I don't know, army green, olive green with teal and orange and light blue and this bright vibrant blue absolutely love all these colors and um is it me I, I i just love green i love this color so i actually bought three meters of this because it was very reasonably priced so what have we got um it was originally nine pounds 90 a meter and it was down to uh, seven pounds 90 a meter and it's a gorgeous quality this goes really nice and I may well be making another one of those M7969, whatever they're called. The, um, I can absolutely see that in that as well. So I may well be getting two versions of that. Otherwise, potentially, it could be... Hmm, I'm not sure. I, I'm wondering if it could be a Megan Nielsen Matilda in the original version with the pockets, possibly omitting the waistband because I just find that uncomfortable, but possibly a Megan Nielsen Matilda. I don't know. But yeah, three meters of that. So future options. Again, I'll be sticking that straight in the wash, possibly overlocking the edges. Yeah, so, so this is why I needed to make some space. So I only got those two um, because I, like I said, Guthrie Garni is a bit of a high upper end in the pricing range uh, but I do do love the fabrics that they have and I do like to just go and browse their uh, their remnants from time to time so that's my little haul and plans underneath this dress I'm just going to remove it now so excuse my back as if I can by the uh, I, sh I should be able to just edit this out but I'm not that sophisticated yet so I'll take that off and try not to crease it so I can put it on. So underneath we've got this, which as I said is the fabric that we got in the last Beyond the Pink Door box. 
I have actually cancelled my subscription to that service now. Not because um, there was any problem with it, especially. I just, I haven't really felt that good about what came through recently. I think the last version I got like two sweets, which is, is, is a stupid thing to complain about, but it's, it just seemed, I don't know. I don't, I, if I had got the other version of the, of the fabric that last month, the viscose that they had, I think I probably would have been happier. This isn't the reason I canceled though. The reason I canceled was I want to try the Soheili Jane box and I can't have two subscription boxes at the same time. So I have treated myself to one of the Soheili Jane, um, the, the big boxes, the more expensive boxes, which should be coming whenever they get released next. So I'll be getting the next one of those and I want to see what that is like. And if I like it, I might subscribe to either that or the lower tier depending on how it is. It is nice to get these unusual fabrics that you might not think of using any other time. Um, to sort of push your boundaries a little bit. I, I don't know. I enjoyed having, it's really nice just to receive a box of surprises. I'm just, I, I don't know if I will go back to the Beyond the Pink Door in the future, but might, I don't know, I'm not ruling it out. It was definitely lovely to receive and um, the fabric was amazing quality. I could not fault the quality at all. Uh, I just, um, so far it hadn't have been for me. You can guarantee the next box that comes out that I'm not subscribed to, it will be absolutely fantastic and I'll have such FOMO that, <laughs> what can you do though? You just don't know, do you? So, so yeah, so look out for a future So Haley Jane box reveal. Anyway, this is a, in my last video, I shared the twirl that I did out of the bed sheet where I had removed the, the waistband on the Meg Nielsen Matilda dress and I had decided to make it a V-neck. When I was doing this version, I decided to tack it together. So I've used the longest stitch on my machine and um, I've just sewn it together without back tacking or any of that business. And I just wanted to see if I could get it over my head. And I can without the button placket being added. So what I've decided to do, and at this point it is not even resembling the Megan Nielsen Matilda dress, it's much more like the, um, what is it called, the Grace dress? I think it's actually much more like that. Um, so I've actually decided that I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to omit the button placket entirely. I'm going to keep it as an overhead. I mean, I could put a concealed zip in the side here if I wanted to for some ease of access but actually I haven't had a problem getting it over my head because the the waistline here sort of sits um like here so my widest part my hips it doesn't have to it doesn't have to go over that so this is not complete yet so I've still got this is the original the original neckline that would have the buttons down the front so I'm gonna take that off Cut it off probably, and then uh, bind the neck with something. Not sure yet what. Um, I've got some fabric left that I'm going to make some inseam pockets with, I think. And I am debating whether or not to put the the armbands on again, or whether I might just bind them. It, I haven't decided. But this is a work in progress, and so far I'm loving it. I'll put a picture of the full length version up there so you can see it. But yeah, very happy with how this is turning out, but it is very much no longer looking like the Megan Nielsen Matilda dress at all, but <laughs> you've got to play with the patterns that you have, right? So that was a lengthier than I expected update from me and plans of what I've got coming up. Hope that was interesting for you. If you did enjoy um, watching, then please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and um, I will update you when I've made some of these. If you've got any ideas for this other than what I've already thought of and indeed this one because I'm very keen to get this made into something because I love this so much, please do drop me a line below and uh, let me know what you think. So thanks for watching, see you soon, bye!